Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's such a cool building. I haven't seen it before. It's really quite remarkable. Um, we are going to have a conversation yes. as, uh, as, we are. <laughs> as advertised. Not a game of chess. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll spend a little bit of time uh, before we get to uh, it's U Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, to say how good Gary was as a chess player, it's just really hard. I can only tell you that they have one of the world's great chess tournaments going on here, and the young players who are, you know, some of them in their early 20s and late 20s, just worship Gary. They're now, now the top-ranked players. I'll just tell you one war story before before starting. Um, so I think uh, Gary played this series of matches against computers, we may come back to computers later. Uh, I think many books, uh, historians regard the match in 1997 against Deep Blue um, as one of the most important events of the 20th century that, you know, he's sort of, I That's why nobody remembers that I won the first one in 96. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he was sort of, we have this legend of Paul Bunyan who used to chop down trees and somebody came in with a gas-powered machine and could chop down trees faster. And, you know, if, he, if the machine could win against Gary, and I'll just throw in for you, it was probably not as good as him at the time, but he didn't prepare enough. But if the machine could win against Gary, he could win against anyone. Anyway, uh, they had a press conference after each game and uh, did a bit of analysis, the computers, people running the computers, and Gary. I wasn't there, but a friend called me up and he goes, oh my God. The number of calculations per minute, the depth of the calculations, I'm quitting chess. And I said, oh, yeah, the computers have gotten really good. Like, I didn't mean the computers. I meant Gary. <laughs> 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 so uh, anyway, so a truly remarkable, uh, remarkable uh, player. Um, you just played a, a, a match against uh, 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 some yeah, of the... It's, it's, uh, children it was here. More of entertainment than chess. So well, it's, they were entertained. Yeah, it's, it's for kids. Yeah, so it's, but you're, I it, always try to play events with kids because I remember when I was a kid, you know, just facing you know, legend was something very special. So that's why giving them an opportunity to play a game that, you know, just offering them a few moments that will stay with them for the rest of their life. That's, you know, that's like my duty of promoting the game. You promote chess for children a lot, though. Yeah, I do, yes. So sometimes at the expense uh, uh, of my own family <laughs> because I have to travel a lot. I have to say I tried to teach my kids chess and, and they were very dutiful and went to a chess club for a little while, but yeah. my daughter decided she liked dance better. My son decided he liked basketball. No, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I have three kids, so that's two the eldest kids. So they, they know how to play but never shown any interest. So the little one, she's eight year old, she, she has a great interest, so she still prefers other things, you know, but uh, chess, you know, it's, it's, it's some, she has some form of passion, but again, yes, if we learn from, you know, the loss of genetics, so I have to watch for my grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with that. Um, I, I, I just want to throw out a couple questions about, you know, when you started playing and you know, what your life was like. Now, I, I actually am not sure how it worked, but you were already pulled out of school at an early age? Pulled out of school? I have no idea, I'm asking you. No. Uh, I graduated school with a gold medal, so okay. Okay, was, all right. Yes, I, uh, no, I, that was yeah, I told probably, probably you States. mixed him with Bobby Fischer, you know, so he pulled out of school. <laughs> you uh -huh. know, no, no, it's, it's, yeah. I, so how did the Russian I, system work? I mean, I, 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 I actually I, I, you, everybody you know, asks me all the time about the first moment when I when I learned how to play chess, and unfortunately, you know, there was no Twitter at that time to report. You know, that's that was a night when Gary looked at the chess set. You know, uh, 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 where my parents, you know, tried to solve a problem and, and learn how to play chess somewhere in 1968 or 1969. I don't know, but uh, by age seven, I, I knew that there was a game that I loved and. Uh, I, um, I went to uh, the chess section of the Pioneer Palace. So it's the, it's, it's, my father died yes, it's that year, so it just came out age 39. But this is the last decision he made. So because again, it's the, it could be a choice of just doing some music, you know, as a, as a Jewish family, or chess. So, and he said, no, no, his mind is sort of mathematical, logical. He must do chess, and that was the last. But, uh, 
the most important decision he made. And uh, I, I loved it, and uh, I climbed at the, at the chest stairs very quickly, so by age 10 I was, I was already a very strong player. And by 12 I was the Soviet Junior Champion under 18, which is in the Soviet Union. That's incredible. You can imagine that's, 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 the, the, that's of the strength of the competition there. And um, it's age 14, so I, I already knew that I would be playing chess at the highest level. Though, again, being the world champion is it's a dream. But, and I could realize you, you, once said, you once said to me, we haven't known each other that long, maybe five, four or five years. But you once said to me, I never realized I'd get that good. I just didn't imagine it when I started. No, it's, it's, it's it, look, it's... <laughs> It was a form of a passion because you know I feel very comfortable. So just uh, I read a lot of books. You know I, um, as I said, you know, I, I didn't have any problems at school. So, uh, but you know where I felt most comfortable was in the chess board. I, I got to tell you, speaking of school, so I represented the United States in the World Under 21 Championship when I was 16 in Stockholm, and uh, Natalie Karpov, who became your great rival. Um, was 18 representing the Soviet Union, and I read, oh, he's an English major at uh, Leningrad University. That's that's really good. I I actually tried to learn a little Russian, but didn't know much. I go up to him and say, hi, how are you? And I sort of had the impression he didn't speak a word of English, yeah. and and, and uh, so yeah, I, I I didn't I didn't was, appreciate your different trajectory. He's learned very good English since. But, uh, Speaking about the Soviet system, it's chess was never part of the education. So that's the it's uh, it's. Uh, popular misconception that chess, you know, belonged to the educational system, but it was rather a sort of propaganda tool. So, okay, I, I can hardly criticize that because I, I was one of the beneficiaries, uh, because the, the, there was a very, it was a very broad network, and when the talent was found, so there was a, you know, you, you were already in good hands, so that's this, you could be promoted from one level to another, you know, just learn from, from more experienced players. So there was also state support available for talented players because chess was a very important, one of the most, the most important propaganda tools to display the superiority of communist regime over the decadent West. So that's why top chess players, they enjoyed, you know, certain immunity uh, in, in, in their daily life. So having, you know, better conditions available for them just to, to perform. And um, you know, I, I, uh, when I, as a world champion already in the late eighties, I tried to convince the authorities to have chess in the schools, but they, they showed really? no, no, no. I had no idea. I mean, I thought that it was, you know, they had after school. And... No, no, it's, 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 it was totally separate. So this, wow. and uh, it's while I'm promoting now chess, chess for education is it's not to find another Gary Kasparov or Bob Fisher, though nobody will object if, if it happens. But it's more like having chess as a very sophisticated and very inexpensive tool to help kids, especially from underprivileged families, to meet the challenge of modern education. Because it helps them you know, to improve their cognitive skills, it's logic, concentration, uh, they learn about uh, legal framework, uh, about patterns, and uh, it's... Uh, and it beats a video game. I mean. Yes, and it's... it's Again, it's inexpensive. You don't have to build a swimming pool, a tennis court, a, a, a football field, um, which is important in many in, in many places. And uh, we have plenty of data accumulated from you know different quarters, from you know the best private schools to many public schools that cannot uh, brag, you know, good conditions for for, for kids. And uh, it's, so it's, I, it's the same. I, the people sometimes uh, ask me what I got from chess, and one thing I say is it sort of trains your nerves. And I think most chess players, up to a pretty high level, when they lose a game, they're much more likely to lose the next day. It's correlated. Or when uh, they actually, make Magnus mistake. Carlsen, the current world champion? No, no, no. I mean, he just... The, the weaker uh, players. Player, yes. player. Magnus no, no. Al almost always wins next yeah, 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 yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly right. Yes. That's exactly That's why right. he's a world champion, yes. And that's why you are the world champion. Actually, it reminds me of something else. So I, I, when I met Gary the first time, I, I was trying to think of something positive about my career. And I, I said, you know, um, I had very good luck on Friday the 13th because my opponents were very superstitious. Chess players are very superstitious. And I was less superstitious, so I would get there, and I think it's Friday the 13th, it's your unlucky day. And Gary thought for a second, he said, well, I don't know, I'm thinking I always won on Friday the 13th. And I said, well, that's not fair because you won every day. So <laughs> but still, I, I was like 13, so born April 13, <laughs> the students world champion, so always looking for 13 on the wall. 